Greetings, folks. We are sitting in a Tesla Model X 75D. And what am I doing in a Tesla Model X 75D? Well, this is no, not a new car. I can't afford to get a new Model X 75D or 100D or whatever other Ds. But um, I did happen to come across a used 75D and this is what you would call a unicorn model X meaning that uh, number one it's got it's a 2016 so it's grandfathered in for unlimited free supercharging for the life of the vehicle which of course you know with how much I drive that is a must number two it's also one of the very very few uh, model cars but Model X's in general that were made in 2016 that also have autopilot to hardware or in other words hardware that is eventually capable of full self drive so I figured if I was going to get a Model X why not get one with autopilot one I've already beaten autopilot one to death with a, with a baseball bat here practically testing it and not much more can come from that. But Autopilot 2 with uh, things such as uh, Navigate on Autopilot and um, things like oh, Full Self Drive maybe? Well, you guys need me to do those testing, don't you? Because, uh, well, remember, me and Mike are the reason uh, for those unaware, Mike is my human crash test dummy. Uh, the reason we pretty much have uh, pedestrian detection and stopping for bicycles and small animals with autopilot, thanks to our or me putting Mike out in the middle of the road and basically trying to run him down with autopilot. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, thank you, Mike, for volunteering. But let's get back to it. What are my first impressions thus far of a... 70D or just an auto uh, model X in general. Ah, herbal tea. Nope, not beer. Uh, it's a completely different driving feel than my 90D uh, model S. Uh, why do I have to keep saying the battery? I'm not going to keep saying the battery uh, size anymore. I'm just going to uh, refer to it as uh, the model S or the model X. And so, number one, the Model X drives like an SUV. Uh, there's really no other way to put it. It is an SUV. More, maybe more of a crossover, but to me, an SUV is an SUV. There we go. Um, there is another difference. My Model S has uh, the coil spring suspension whereas this has the uh, air suspension. So there's a different feel with that. I feel the, the, the coil suspension on my Model S, while it's a little bit rougher of a ride, the actual handling of, of the, the vehicle is considerably better. I've noticed this with other Model S's that I've had as loaders that had the air suspension. Whereas uh, the air suspension, on the other hand, while it is a nice smooth drive, no matter what level I have it set at, it feels real squishy and delayed response. Uh, like if I were to shake the wheel, um, you know, try and avoid an object, I feel, I feel like the whole vehicle rocks. And once again, this is likewise with, um, with the, a Model S as well. Uh, overall, I'm a, I can tell you I'm already getting a little tired of both the Falcon Wing doors and the automatic opening front doors uh, I, I did have to finally turn off I tried I really tried hard but I had to turn off the automatic opening front doors uh, for the main reason of I'm just trying to put my garbage can out to the street for the garbage men the door opens up right in front of me <laughs> or we're going I want to go to my Model S which is parked next to it to to get something out of say the front seat or the back door and as I approach, because they're parked next to each other, the door opens again. It opens, it opens, it opens. 
uh, or I'm trying to just unlock the Model X. So I hit the key fob twice, just like I do with my Model S, just to unlock the vehicle. And instead, the driver's door opens. Or if I hit it two more times, both the driver's door opens and the passenger door open. And I don't mean just unlock, I mean open for those unaware. The front doors on the Model X are powered and they literally open for you, kind of like a chauffeur. Uh, I do like, however, when I hit the lock button, if any door that is open, except for the front, because the fronts are not on a powered hinge, all the doors close themselves. That I like. A little bit of a construction area going on here. But I, I feel that um, right now those Falcon Wing doors, while they are cool, I still have to stick with my old, old opinions of that was one of the biggest F-ups Tesla has ever done, right next to the self-presenting door handles on the Model S, which are constantly broken on the Model S. Um, I just, I'm nervous about when one of the Falcon Wing doors breaks, what it's going to cost, and uh, if, it'll, if I'll be able to keep it or manually close it to be able to drive to a service center or, or to get it fixed. But those are pretty much my main complaints there. Um, now, I got the seven passenger. I don't know, for those of you watching on my VR 360 cam uh, video version, uh, I do have the seven passenger sedan, uh, the version of the Model X. Uh, what I did not like is that the middle row does not fold down flat. The trunk, or the, the back row, does fold down flat uh, to make the trunk larger. But with the seats up to make the vehicle seven passenger, the trunk is... Wait until we get past the bumpy part here. I did choose the absolute bumpiest road in the area. But with the, uh, the back seats up, the trunk is very, very tiny. About the only thing I'll be able to fit back there will be the baby stroller. Another thing would be is to get into the back seats, you have to push the button. Instead of just moving a single one of the seats, it moves both the, side, the seat closest to the door that you're pushing the button, and it moves the middle seat. Um, so if there's somebody sitting there, pushes them forward. If it's a larger person, they're going to hit their knees on the center console, possibly. But all in all, I, I am kind of liking the, the Model X. I, I think I, I'd still prefer, prefer the Model S as a daily driver um, because it's just it's more of a pleasure to drive, in my opinion. But the Model X does have its place. I cannot wait to see what this thing does in the winter time uh, and handling. Now, it's of course, it's the same basic systems as the Model S. But on the SUV frame, and uh, I, I can tell you, this this past winter was really a, a nasty one, and I could have really used the additional height. I think that's the that's the main place where I'm going to actually like the air suspension, is being able to adjust the height up to very high, as I did get my Model S stuck on snow that would that compacted. It was a real wet snow. It would have been great snowman or snowball snow is how nice it compacted. And the weight of the vehicle on the Model S compacted it down as I was going over. So basically I lifted the car off the ground onto this compacted snow. Not the most ideal of circumstances. Thankfully I did get out of that one. Uh, now the Model X does have factory supported towing which I cannot wait to use because having that extra towing capacity will really come in handy for hauling trailers. I do haul trailers quite a bit, but I had to limit my trailer towing with the Model S. While the Model S does not have factory supported towing, uh, Torque Lift Central's Eco Hitch um, does support 2,000 pound towing capacity with a 200 pound hitch weight capacity, uh, whereas the Model X uh, supports a 5,000 pound towing capacity, uh, factory supported, I should say, I gotta remember that, factory supported 
5,000 pound towing capacity. And I gotta read again, I wasn't sure if the hitch weight capacity was 300 pounds or 500 pounds. Either way, uh, the hitch weight capacity will be more than enough for my purposes and what I need. Uh, which is to haul my dad's big giant heavy steel trailer with who knows what for him, wherever he needs it. Now, um, the elephant in the room. I might as well get to that. Autopilot 1 versus Autopilot 2. And of course, I am going to have, now that I got this thing with Autopilot 2 hardware, I am going to have a whole slew of Autopilot related videos just for you folks. And, uh, I mean, like I said, I beat a dead horse with the Model S and Autopilot 1, but now Autopilot 2 is a whole new can of worms. And I am popping the top right off that can. So, let's get down to the nitty gritty. I picked this thing up in Boston. I flew to Boston from Milwaukee. And then we went to the credit union I, with, the, I, with the owner, of the, the previous owner. Uh, we did the paperwork at the credit union. And I pretty much dropped her off We're at her work. And I hopped in and I drove all the way back to Milwaukee. Uh, met a few of my great friends on the way. John, um, thank you for the uh, the goodies and meeting me at the Buffalo Supercharger. And it was great seeing you again. For those unaware, John, um, you guys can reference John in my old 2014 Niagara Falls Tesla trip video. That was the first long trip that I ever took in my in a, in a, in an electric vehicle, which was in my old Model S60. Now, I have to say, Autopilot 2 is really shining. I've had Autopilot 2 loaners back before any of the features exceeded what Autopilot 1 had, and I was very unimpressed at the time. But Autopilot 2 has matured, and it's now starting to get those self-driving features. Notice, the thing I noticed, number one, Autopilot 2 does a better job at seeing lane lines. Autopilot 1 needs a stronger, more visible line to lock onto, or Autopilot 2 can lock onto lines that are pretty darn faded, and in some cases disappeared for a considerable distance before they came back. And the car still maintained what its lane would be. I know Elon did mention that eventually, Autopilot 2 slash full self-drive will even be able to drive without lane lines at all, which is great because you know, apply light force to the steering wheel, but I've had my hands on the whole time, but that's the usual. The nags haven't gone away. It's still got all the nags. We're going to be with it. They're stuck with them for a while. So lane lines, that was the number one thing I noticed. Number two, I did not run into too many situations where the Autopilot 2 could not handle them. Uh, like, uh, some place like, uh, yeah, let's see what would be a good example. Uh, say there's a spot in the road, yet no Autopilot 1 is going to prompt you to take over because it's having trouble, so I'll give you the ee, 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 take over control of the vehicle. Uh, whereas that same spot, Autopilot 2 would just sail right through, not a problem, not losing control at all. Where Autopilot 2 did not shine so far was what I would call the squirreliness factor. Autopilot 2 so far has been playing it too safe. Uh, whereas Autopilot 1 would slow down for me if someone's, you know, say I'm on the freeway, someone's getting closer to their lane line. Uh, Autopilot 2 or 1 would slow down a little bit and uh, just to make sure that person wasn't crossing into my lane. On the flip side, Autopilot 2 decided, I'm just going to slam on the freaking brakes, and if you're not wearing your seatbelt, you're going through that window. I cannot tell you how many times Autopilot 2 did a pretty much an a, a emergency stop on the freeway just because somebody else got a little too close to their lane. I think that's a, that's a little, little unnecessary. And I can see where some of the uh, the big review companies 
uh, out there, car review, um, newspapers, websites, and, uh, and magazines had their gripes on that. And I never really experienced that until I finally got something like this. So that was, that was a bad one. Another bad one was, uh, okay, say I'm in the right lane, you know, on the freeway, and there's an on-ramp, car's coming up. That car's going to eventually merge. Well, I'm going at a full, pretty fast speed, but the car that's getting on the freeway is going slower. Well, instead of the Model X or Autopilot 2 maintaining its speed, and, you know, I would have ended up passing that person well before they merged. Instead, once again, Autopilot 2 decides, I am going to really slow the F down, slower than what that vehicle that's merging with us is going. So instead of just passing, everybody's nice and happy, once again, Model X or Autopilot 2 slammed on the brakes to let them merge. Of course, you can override that by pressing the accelerator. But I would prefer not to have to do that because that is a very, in both cases, of someone getting too close to their lane line and someone merging on like that, the way it slams on the brakes and slows down is extremely unsafe. If someone's tailgating a little bit clo too close and they're not expecting that, that's something like doing a brake check to somebody on the freeway and they're not paying attention, bam, now you just got rear-ended. That's an accident that could have been avoided, and Tesla needs to fix that in their programming. Uh, another autopilot issue was uh, merging uh, or changing lanes. The automatic, uh, or nav on autopilot. Uh, right now, you still have to confirm with the turn signal, although I hear they are releasing this week, limited releasing um, geographically, uh, the lane the autopilot navigate on autopilot without confirmation now all too many times as the vehicle started changing lanes all of a sudden it just the the wheel would just crank right back over and it put me back in my the lane I was in uh, once again that's a little unsafe now the reason it was unsafe is Wow, water's over the road. This whole area's been flooding out. Oh, that house burned down. Holy crap. Is that Bob's house? Huh. Uh, the whole the whole reason it's unsafe is because there's nobody next to me. So I don't know why it all of a sudden decided to yank the wheel back over and go back into the lane it was already in. When it already had committed to the lane change, there's nothing there. So, okay, enough griping about that. Uh, the feel, fit, and finish, the, the, the Model X, this, at least this one, feels a lot more refined than, the, than my Model S. And now we're talking about a 10-month a manufacturing difference. My Model S was January of 2016 build, build date. Uh, this one is November or November or December. I, I, I got two different documents that say two different things. Uh, build date of 2016. Um, the fit and finish, everything is pretty darn solid. This is a solid vehicle. Very, very impressed. Um, I like the screen, the, the dash, all the dash, all this. It feels and looks pretty much the same as my Model S. There's not too much difference between them. Even the steering wheel, the controls, everything is, is the same. So it's, it's a familiar feel. However, Firmware 9, I really tried. I tried and tried and tried to feel comfortable with it so, so, so much. But alas, Firmware 9 is still... A giant cluster F U C you know what uh, my model S I've kept on firmware 8 because I stand to gain pretty much zero benefit of firmware 9 with with uh, with uh, my autopilot 1 and my model S now autopilot 2x vehicles um, yes you do get a crap load of new features so if you actually want full self-drive or any kind of navigate on autopilot you're going to need to get firmware 9, and that really stinks. Uh, 
Yeah. But it is just a complete mess of a firmware update. Uh, stuff is buggy, broken, not a fan whatsoever. Now, my car, ha or my Model S has piano black interior and the crappy cheap looking plastic. This car, while it is the, the cheaper version, it's a wood grained plastic that looks so much better, even though it does, down here it is scratched a living heck. Uh, we got the, uh, the ventilated seats, and um, these are actually pretty good. They heat up very nice. They actually heat up a little quicker than my Model S, um, and they also cool. So I think, they, I think these seats are actually discontinued, but both heat and cool. So hold on, I gotta see if this is Bob's house or not. And I think that is. Hard to tell. I thought that was my friend's house. I was going to say, that's his that burned down. First I heard about it. Well, maybe he's down a little further. Anyways, uh, I, I do like the wood grain. It gives it a lot more classy feel, uh, a less cheap of a feel, uh, which is good. Um, the ventilated seats, back to those. Yes, I re I'm really liking these ventilated seats. Um, heat and cool. I'm not trying to cool out yet because it's still... 40 degrees outside, so I don't want to get cooler than I already am. Uh, a major improvement with the X versus the S is the rear climate control. This vehicle actually does have vents in the back for the third row and middle row passengers, and it pumps out tons of air. Uh, even the front Overall, the heating and cooling system of this car moves so much more air than the Model S uh, does at all. This is more on par with a Model 3 than it is with a Model S. So, very impressed by that. Plus, it's got uh, multiple zones, if, if those of you that might be able to see. Um, we do have, I can control the rear and the front independently. Uh, oh yeah, I do want that on. I just, I just got a little fresh air coming in. I didn't want it up too high. Uh, of course, you got rear defroster, front defroster. It's nice having the music button right there, but to have to try and bring up this tiny little menu on the bottom for the apps is just horrible. Now, this one also has the built-in center console, which is kind of nice. Um, I do like my Model S. My Model S was built before the center console came standard. Now I can get it retrofitted, but I have an EVNX or Evanix, depending on how you pronounce it, uh, uh, removable center console, which I like, because on some occasions, I don't like having the center console. I remove it. And I got that nice wide open space, and sometimes I, I, I want to have it. So it takes me just a minute or two to remove it, uh, whereas this is a... it's in there. Um, now we got just like the S, we got two USB ports and the 12 volt down here. But in the back, we also have two USB ports for the rear passengers and fold out cup holders, which is absolutely spectacular. It's great. I love it. Uh, there is a nice, nice sized uh, storage, storage under, under trunk storage compartment. So that's great too. Um, haven't dug back there too much. I've only had this for a couple days, and trust me, after uh, I got up at 5 a.m. on Thursday, uh, took uh, the Coach USA bus from Milwaukee Airport to Chicago O'Hare, hopped on my United flight to Boston, took an Uber from from the Boston Airport to uh, the the ladies' uh, bank, and then drove pretty much straight home. I got home at like 5 p.m. on Friday. Uh, pretty much no sleep. You know, you try napping at superchargers, but, you know, while you're driving, you get sleepy, and then you, yeah, I'm tired, tired, you, you know, you get that little, you know, you got to fight it. But then as soon as you come to the darn stop at the supercharger, 
then you're wide freaking awake, ready right? to do some jumping jacks or go for a run, a jog. It's crazy. I don't know if it's highway hypnosis or what. But overall, I am very impressed with the Model X. If there was just two things I absolutely wish they would have changed. Is get rid of the stupid self-presenting front doors, motorized front doors, and give me just traditional ones with good door handles. I like the Model 3 door handles. The Model 3 was done right with the door handles. Don't like the Model X door handles, and don't like the Model S door handles. Uh, and, of course, get rid of the stupid Falcon Wing doors. Looks cool, but, you know, delayed production of the Model X for a whole year. What's with that? Just give us some, some decent door handles. They probably could have dropped the price of the X a, few, few, a cool couple grand just from that alone because I don't know too many people that bought the Model X because of the doors. And I know those most people that I know of bought the Model X because they needed an SUV or a tow vehicle. So, can't wait to give this thing a try pulling some loads. I might be pulling a Bobcat in a couple weeks. But in the meantime, it looks like I will be bringing home my baby girl, my little daughter, in a Model X. This will be her first car ride will be in this. Maybe my S, but most likely this. Which comes to the reason I ended up having to buy another vehicle to begin with. You all know Vinny and Gino. Ages eight and a half for Gino and eleven for Vinny, but I have a little baby girl due quite literally any time now. Could be now, could be tomorrow, could have been yesterday. We're that close, so I needed something a little larger. My Model S was getting small because it's two adults, three kids, which technically would have fit in the Model S. But we also have my in-laws. And my in-laws visit from China. And my mother-in-law is here now for six months. I am not going to be fitting two of me, my wife, my mother-in-law, Vincent and Jean, and baby in my Model S. It's just not going to happen. I suppose I could retrofit the, uh, the rear jump seats into the Model S uh, like I had on my first Model S. But even then, once again, we bring our usable capacity of the vehicle down considerably in terms of actually being able to put anything in the car. So that will conclude my initial impressions of the Model X. And uh, next video is coming up. I'm going to have, I'm going to be demonstrating the Navigate on Autopilot. Let's go to Navigate to Costco. Another thing I didn't like about Firmware 9 is it keeps hiding my camera. Alright, I select the destination, but my camera's still down. Gone. Hey. So, navigate. Once it's done processing, and it's not showing. I'm surprised. First time it didn't show. Normally it would pop up a little bar, you hit that, navigate on autopilot. But, I didn't, so maybe I have to be on the freeway. I'm still learning learning this stuff a little bit here. But um, we're going to be doing Navigate on Autopilot, and then again Navigate on Autopilot without confirmation uh, once um, I get that firmware release. And then a f another step further still, I will be doing side-by-side -side comparisons between na uh, Autopilot on my Model S with Autopilot 1, and Autopilot on my Model X with Autopilot 2. So, that is all. Signing off, because this video is considerably longer than I originally anticipated.